On today's show, we're going to be unboxing the brand new Epifan Pearl Mini. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo Joseph talking about photo, video, and live streaming tech. And the live streaming is not an everyday thing, but every once in a while we do because this show is live. It is live. If you're watching live, that means you're watching live and you can participate in the chat, which I cannot throw up on screen right now because we are streaming in 4K and it's a little bit of an odd setup and I just, I just can't. But if you are new to this channel, new to the show, make sure you hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up, hit that, you know, hit the bell, get notified, all that good stuff. So you know when we go live, but we normally go live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, which is what this is today. Right now, it's Wednesday. So we are talking about the brand new Epifan Video Pearl Mini. We're going to do a little unboxing here. We're going to see what's in the in the setup. And then over the next few weeks, I'm going to have this for a little while. Over the next few weeks, I am going to start, oh, I'm going to do a full demo of this. I'm going to show you all the features of it. Um, and we're going to actually start streaming the show from it. So this will be uh, this will be a little bit of a change up of how we normally do things because this product is going to get a really extensive look throughout the course of the show. By the way, if you are watching live, you have any questions, make sure when you put them up in the chat, you put Photo Joseph in front of them. I see them right on my screen. I can't, I can't show you that right now, but... Just believe me, I do. And uh, we will do a Q&A after the show. We'll, we'll wrap this thing up with the Q&A. So if you have any questions you want to ask, we'll hit those then. Um, anyway, so the, the Epifan Video Pearl Mini is the little brother to the Pearl 2. The Pearl 2 is actually what I'm using right now to stream. That's why we're able to stream in 4K. So those of you who are watching in 4K, who are able to get, who have the bandwidth and the screen to see it, and are going, whoa, look at the quality of that thing. It's amazing. That's because it is a hardware encoder. When you look at your live streaming encoders, you have hardware and you have software. Software would be things like, uh, like Wirecast or OBS, which is good, but hardware is better. Dedicated hardware, in my experience, will always give you a better quality stream. The Pearl 2 is a very high-end device. It's an $8,000 piece of hardware. It's capable of streaming in, in 4K, and it has multiple inputs, scalers built into it, frame rate converters built into it, recorders built into it. It is... It has like everything that you would need in something that's the size of well, maybe two or three laptops stacked on top of each other. We've talked about that quite a bit in the past. Um, I'll link to a playlist up here so you can, if you want to explore that, you check, click on this, you'll see a bunch of different videos that we've talked to uh, uh, talked about it in the past. Um, so that was the high end of what of what Epifan has, is the high end of what Epifan has. On the lower end, they have a little tiny box called the X2. This is a $300 box. I think that's right, close enough. $300 box that is a dedicated hardware streamer. It has one input, actually technically has two inputs, but um, it's got a USB input for like a webcam, but uh, one real input, one real HDMI input. It dedicate, it's dedicated for streaming to Twitch, Facebook, um, YouTube, you know, whatever, all the, all the usual players. And being that it's a smaller, obviously lower cost device, it's a hardware streamer, but it's not as good as what you'd get out of the Pearl. Um, certainly, it's, it's not the same quality, but it's great because you have a little tiny piece of hardware, you plug it in and you're on the air and away you go. But again, it's that one input. This sits in between the two. So price-wise, let's take a quick, let's just start with that. Price-wise, it's at 3,500. So it is less than half of the Pearl 2, clearly significantly more than the X2, but this is a dedicated, as you can see in the description, all-in-one video production system. So what does that mean? What that means is that with this hardware, this should be everything you need to do your switching, your recording, and obviously your streaming. You can put titles, you can put graphics, you can bring in multiple sources, you can bring in multiple sources of different mixed resolutions and stream them out, do all of that. It does it in HD. This is not a 4K device. If you want 4K, that's the Pearl 2. Um, but as for those of you who are watching live we're, and we're around for the pre-show, we are doing 4K now and doing 4K um, does have its limitations. So. Depends on what you need, of course, but the Pearl Mini is going to be what the vast majority of people out there who are doing high-end, high-quality streaming are going to want to get their hands on. If you want something that handles everything and you want to stream in HD, something tells me this is going to be the box. Now, in full uh, full disclosure, uh, Epifan is a client of mine. They have hired me to do projects in the past. I am not being paid to do this. They have ship, shipped this out to me on loan so that I can do an unboxing and do a review, and um, it will likely go back to them, although the Pearl 2, they may ask for the Pearl 2 back. I'm not quite sure. Um, but they are good friends. I, I love the company. I love their products. I am not being paid for this review, but um, I am pretty sure this is going to be a pretty positive review because I've been looking forward to this hardware for a long time. This thing's pretty awesome. Okay, let's uh, let's get started, shall we? So let's see what's in the box. Let's uh, let's do a little overhead view because we can do that. Get my switcher out of the way here, and let's see what's in here. 
waiting for the, uh, ooh, uh, waiting for that box to fall off the bottom. Come on, here we go, here we go. It's almost there, and it's almost, okay, really, come on, we're getting there. There it goes. Pop, and it's off. So, opens straight up to a beautiful little piece of hardware. You can see the size of this. This is, this is nice and small. It is about the size of a laptop. I, I can't, let's see over here, let me get my iPad. This is a regular size iPad for size comparison. So, oh, actually, well, that's surprising. It's the size of the iPad. This is the, this is the Pro, whatever this size is. What, 11? No, what is this? 11 inch? I think that's right. So it's that size. It is obviously thicker. So you can see there, it's a bit thicker than that. Um, but that's not huge. That is a really nicely small device. It's not the kind of thing you're just going to throw on your shoulder bag and go, but if you are going to be traveling and you want to do some live streaming on the road, this is clearly much more portable than the Pearl 2 or any other big solution out there. In fact, with that said, I don't know if I've told you guys this yet. On Friday, I'm not going to have a show Friday because I'm flying to Detroit. For anybody that's in the Detroit area, there is a an event at the zoo. Um, West, I think it's Westwood Camera, I think that's right, um, is, is doing an event at the Detroit Zoo. I will be there Saturday and Sunday and uh, doing a thing for Panasonic. So if you're in the area, um, come to the zoo. It's going to be awesome. But anyway, so I'm going to be in Detroit. I will, I'm planning on taking this with me and trying to do a live show from the hotel or something. Now, those always are limited based off of what kind of bandwidth I get out of the hotel. So we'll see if it even works. But I am planning on bringing this with me so I can try. Uh, anyway, so back to this thing. So you see the size? It's pretty small. So before we start looking at this, let's see if there's anything else in the box we want to look at. There is, what else is in here? here let's go back to that top-down view. You've got your power cords. You've, oh, that's the other part of the power cord. Okay, so you have a power brick. So you do have, it's pretty good sized power supplies. So you have to have this power supply that is not built into the device. So you're gonna be carrying these two things with you. And then let's see if you get anything else in the box. Doesn't look like it. No, no HDMI cables, nothing else. So pretty straightforward. You have the product and the power supply and that is all there is to it. Okay, let's get this out of the way. And let's start looking at the product itself. Let me get the close-up camera. That's actually pretty good right there. I think that'll allow you to see what's going on. And here we go. We can see it a little bit closer than that, can't we? Okay, so these are your inputs. Let's just go uh, left to right or right to left or you know, whatever. Uh, power, obviously, power input. Okay, so you've got two USB inputs. That would allow you to bring in things like a webcam. So if you have USB-based cameras, you can plug those in there. Most people who are doing a professional stream are probably not going to want that, but it's nice to have. Um, I've used them a couple times on the Big Pearl as well. It's just, it's just convenient. You've got a webcam laying around, you want an extra camera, so just plug it in there. Away you go, pretty straightforward. Next to that, you have an HDMI out. Now that is for monitoring. So if you want to have your show up on a separate screen so that you can see what's going on on a bigger screen than just seeing it on this little screen here, which incidentally, this screen here shows you everything you need, including the show itself, which is pretty awesome. Even the Pearl, uh, the Pearl 2 has a much smaller, about the quarter of this size screen. So this right there is, is giving you a better, uh, a better experience. We'll talk more about the screen in a moment here. And anyway, so that HDMI out is so that you can plug it into a bigger TV and watch the output there as well. Now that I've moved it, let me refocus there. Okay, uh, let's go back into it. You've got then next to that an Ethernet port. So if you are uh, hard, actually, you know what? This probably is only hardline Ethernet. This probably does not have Wi Fi built into it. That is something I will have to check, but uh, it probably doesn't. So you probably need a hardline Ethernet line in. That is an SDI. Let's see, what is that? SDI, it doesn't say in or out. That's interesting. Uh, we're going to assume that is SDI in. Yeah, it must be. It's got to be the inputs right there. So an SDI input, and then two HDMI inputs, so HDMI A and B. So you can bring in two HDMI sources, an SDI source, and then two USB sources. I am I, Part of this, I because this is literally an unboxing, I have not played with this thing yet, I'm kind of assuming, I wish they said in and out on all of them, be a little bit more clear of what they are, but uh, based off of the previous hardware, that's what I'm assuming those are inputs, all inputs there. That makes sense since the only output so far says actually out on it. So yeah, we're going to assume everything else is an input since it doesn't say it. Okay, so two USB ins, HDMI out, Ethernet, SDI, and then two HDMI inputs. And then you have your audio input. So you have an analog audio input. Uh, this is, I mean, I'm not sure what you'd use this for beyond the way I'm actually using it on my device is to bring an iPod into here so I can play background music. So you got that. And then your XLR ins. So you could either connect, if you had two lav mics on XLR inputs uh, with XLR connections on them, you could plug those in and then have two people on sound. Any more than that, and you will, would want to have a dedicated audio device, audio mixer, audio console that would allow you to bring in as many audio sources as you need, mix and match them, and feed that in as a stereo feed into that, which is, which is really what that's designed for. But in a pinch, 
Or if you just want to do something quick and easy, you could plug a lav directly into that, which is great as well. Now, I know from working with the Pearl, the full-size Pearl, that you do have audio uh, latency shifting in there. So if you've got, if your audio and video are out of sync, you can shift them, which is fantastic. That's something I can't even do on my Blackmagic hardware. So that would allow you to bring your signals all into sync manually if you needed to do that, which is important because your audio is going to come in in real time. Your video is going to come in a, over HDMI, a couple frames delayed. And any video coming on an SDI will be real time. So you need to compensate for that. And that, that hardware or that capability is built into this. Okay, let's look at the front. The front of this device. Let's see how we get a little focus on that. And this has, let's see, a power button or power lights. So these are lights, power light, streaming light to show me that we're actually streaming, recording because it does have recording built into it. I have no idea what those are. Interesting. Maybe reset buttons. I don't know. Let's slide this over. And this is exciting. You have an a, a SD card slot built into it. So that is for recording your show. Also, a USB port here, if I remember correctly, this is so that you can plug in either a hard drive or a thumb drive to that to record to it. I think that's what that is. We will confirm that later. And then a headphone port, which would be for monitoring your live show. So there you go. So that is everything there. And then we've got this beautiful thing on the top here. So this is our control surface. It is not just a screen for viewing. It is a touch screen. This will allow you to do all of your switching by touching on here. So for those of you who have watched the show before, you know that what I'm doing on my show here, this iPad is controlling my ATEM switcher. My, just stepping way back for a second for those who aren't super familiar with my setup, all of the switching here is going through a Blackmagic ATEM switcher that is a big expensive piece of hardware for doing all the switching, the picture in pictures, overlays, all of that. It is then feeding into the Pearl 2 for encoding. With that in mind, I am very much replicating what I need. The Pearl 2, I don't own the Blackmagic device. I do. I bought that long before the Pearl 2 was in existence. If I was to start my entire setup over today, I, I probably could. I've never actually sat down and mapped it. I probably could do everything that I'm doing through the Pearl 2 and save myself a lot of hassle and money, frankly, because even though the ATEM is cheaper, it is only one piece of the puzzle, whereas the Pearl 2 does everything, um, which, again, is just the big brother to the little guy here. Anyway, the way that I'm doing it right now is I am going through my ATEM switcher. So that means that what you're looking at here is my control surface, my control interface for the ATEM. I'm not actually streaming from the iPad. This is simply a remote control allowing me to switch camera angles. This type of control is what we'll have on here, except that instead of little colored chiclet buttons, which you have to remember or actually read them whenever you tap it, here you're going to see a preview of your setup. So if you've got a picture-in-picture, -picture, a, a two side-by-side, -side, text overlay, whatever, I'll be able to see those and switch to them here, which I got to say is pretty cool. And I am really, really interested and excited to play with this thing, especially as a portable solution, to be able to be in a hotel or somewhere streaming from this Bring, even if I'm just bringing in, say, a computer and maybe two cameras, um, which is, you know, you're not going to go crazy big on the road. But if I have a computer and two cameras or just a couple of cameras to be able to switch between them on here, I'm pretty slick. So, so there you go. It is has a very solid feel. This is all metal on there. Very, very nice. No. Uh, very good, hard, solid metal on here. It's got a kind of a cool look to it. I like that. And dig it. Nice little venting on the side there. Um, I am going to assume that it runs very, very quiet. Um, maybe it's even fan. Oh, no, there is a fan in there. I can see it. But let's assume that it runs very quiet, hence the big, huge vents running through here because you don't want any extra noise when you're streaming. And yeah, it feels like it's a real hard, solid, robust piece of gear. So there you go. That, my friends, is the Pearl Mini. That is everything that I can tell you about it today. From here on out, we're going to have to start actually using it, streaming it with it, playing with it, and see what we can do. So again, I will try to go live from Detroit this weekend. That is 100% bandwidth dependent. We'll see what I can get. I'm also interesting that it, because it is Ethernet in, and I don't believe it has Wi-Fi built into it, if I recall. That means I'm going to have to figure out how to get a hardline Ethernet in, into there, which um, could be its own challenge in a hotel. So we'll see what I can do. And uh, either way, even if I can't go live from it over the weekend, we will start streaming from this. We're going to still go through my Blackmagic switcher, but then we'll be using this to encode the 1080p stream. So for those of you who have seen my literally hundreds of shows before this that were streamed in 1080p, you'll be able to compare side by side to go back to those old shows, compare how that live stream looked compared to this one, and I am assuming there will be no difference. Uh, I do believe that it is the same hardware encoder in this that is in the Pearl, except that this one's not 4K capable. But it should have the same capability as far as HD streaming as the Pearl 2 has. And then uh, after I've used it for a little bit, put it in production, then I'll do a full-on 
detailed demo instructional video on exactly how this whole thing works. We'll go through the inputs again, and I'll show you how to set it up in software. Um, it's it's a web-based interface, at least from the uh, what the Perl 2 was, web-based interface. But because of this big screen on here, I think we're going to be able to do a lot more in here without having to go into a computer to handle it. So that, my friends, is everything I wanted to show you on that. We're going to jump over to the Q&A now. So if you've got any cues, get them ready, get them into the uh, chat room here, and I'll do my best to answer them. We'll be right back.